In a small rural town nestled between rolling hills and endless fields of golden wheat, two young men named Luke and Jesse were born just a few miles apart. Their homes were simple farmhouses, surrounded by acres of land where crops stretched toward the horizon. Life in the town was quiet, predictable, and slow, with the rhythm of the seasons dictating the daily grind. Farming was in their blood, both families had worked the land for generations, and their futures seemed set from birth, mornings spent tending to livestock, afternoons plowing fields, and evenings spent fixing machinery or preparing for the next day's work. But while most saw this as the only life they'd ever know, Luke and Jesse dreamed of something different. From a young age, both boys had an ear for music, and it became their escape from the monotony of farm life. They were often found singing while they worked, their voices drifting across the fields, carried by the breeze that swept over the plains. Luke's voice was rich and deep, perfectly suited for the soulful country ballads he loved, while Jesse's was smooth and light, effortlessly gliding over melodies. Though they rarely crossed paths, their songs would occasionally echo back and forth across the open land, one's melody answering the others, creating an unspoken bond through their shared love of music. On hot summer days, Luke would take his guitar and sit beneath the shade of an old oak tree, strumming until the sun sank below the horizon. His father would shake his head and remind him that music didn't put food on the table, but Luke didn't care. He played anyway, his heart in every chord, his mind wandering far from the dusty fields to dreams of stages and bright lights. Jesse, on the other hand, had a beaten-up harmonica that he'd carry with him everywhere. It wasn't much, but it was enough to fill his head with the possibilities of a life beyond the farm. When the workday ended and the tractors were parked, Jesse would retreat to the barn, where the acoustics made his harmonica sound like it was filling a concert hall. His father, much like Luke's, would tell him to focus on the real world, but Jesse's mind was filled with melodies he couldn't ignore. The two young men, though close in proximity, lived parallel lives. They both saw music as more than just a hobby, it was their way out. It was their ticket to a world beyond the dirt roads, beyond the fields, and beyond the expectations placed on them by their families and the town. Though neither would admit it, they were each silently aware of the other, each hearing whispers of the other's talent from neighbors or local events. They were always compared, but had never stood side by side, never tested their abilities against one another. Their shared love of music grew deeper as they grew older. While other boys in town dreamed of taking over the family farm, getting married, and living the same life their fathers had, Luke and Jesse dreamed of something more. They spent their nights practicing in secret, Luke with his guitar and Jesse with his harmonica, honing their skills in the hope that one day they could leave this quiet life behind and make something of themselves. To them, music wasn't just a passion, it was the key to escaping a life they weren't sure they wanted. Music was their salvation. When the heat of the summer sun made the work unbearable, a song made it bearable. When the weight of expectations from their families grew too heavy, a melody could lift it, if only for a moment. They sang because they had to, because it was the only thing that made sense to them. And though they didn't realize it, their shared dream of rising above the life they had known since birth was drawing them closer to a day when their rivalry would no longer be silent, when their voices would no longer be echoes in the wind, but two sides of a single, unbreakable competition. Unbeknownst to both of them, their dreams and ambitions were on a collision course, one that would come to a head the night they stood on the same stage, each trying to prove that their voice was the one that deserved to rise above the fields, the farms, and the town that had shaped them. Though Luke and Jesse had never sung together, their reputations as the town's finest young musicians had long preceded them. They were known by the locals for their undeniable talents, often the subject of conversation at the general store or whispered about after Sunday church services. It wasn't unusual to hear an old farmer remark that Luke's voice could stir the soul, while someone else would counter, but Jesse, he's got something special too, he makes that harmonica weep. Each had his own following, a small but loyal group of townspeople who believed their chosen favorite would one day put their quiet farming community on the map. Despite this, Luke and Jesse had never really crossed paths. They lived just far enough apart, attended different gatherings, and ran in slightly different circles. But the comparisons were always there, lingering in the background, creating an unspoken rivalry between them. 
They knew of each other's talent but had never faced it head on, each quietly wondering if they were the better musician, though neither would admit it out loud. That all changed on one fateful evening at the annual town music competition, the biggest event of the year. Held in the old church hall, it was the kind of event that brought the whole town together, farmers, shopkeepers, children, and grandparents all gathered to celebrate the music that lived in their community. The air buzzed with excitement, and for one night, the usual concerns of crops and weather were replaced by the promise of song and melody. It was a time when dreams felt a little more attainable, where anyone with a voice and an instrument could stand on stage and, just for a moment, believe they could make it beyond the boundaries of their small world. For Luke and Jesse, the stakes couldn't have been higher. Both had entered the competition before as boys, but this time was different. They were older now, more polished, and the competition held new weight. It wasn't just about town bragging rights anymore, there were whispers that a talent scout from the city would be in attendance, looking for new voices to bring to the big stage. It was a rare opportunity, the kind that could change the trajectory of their lives forever. To win meant more than just a trophy, it meant a shot at the future they both secretly longed for. As Luke and Jesse each arrived at the event, they couldn't help but notice the growing crowd, the stage lights brighter than ever before. The air was thick with anticipation, but for both men, there was also a nervous tension, knowing that this night could be the beginning of something bigger. Backstage, they finally crossed paths. Luke was tuning his guitar, while Jesse was practicing with his harmonica, running through the chords and melody in his head. When they locked eyes, the tension was palpable. Neither spoke at first, both sizing each other up, knowing that this was the moment where they would finally go head to head. Then, in a twist of fate that neither had anticipated, they both learned they had chosen the same song to perform. The song they had picked was a classic country ballad, a local favorite that showcased both vocal and instrumental talent. It was a song about heartbreak and hope, one that tugged at the heartstrings of the audience, and both Luke and Jesse had been sure it would be their key to winning. But now, standing face to face, they realized they were about to go to battle over the same melody. At first, there was an awkward silence, a shared disbelief that they had made the same choice. But then, that silence turned into something darker, an unspoken challenge. Each believed the other had stolen their thunder, that performing the same song would somehow diminish their individual performance. It was as if the song wasn't big enough for both of them, and one would inevitably outshine the other. You sure you want to sing that one? Luke asked, half-smiling but with an edge in his voice. Jesse shrugged, his eyes narrowing slightly. Guess we'll see who does it better. The rivalry, once subtle and distant, now burned fiercely between them. Neither was willing to back down. This was their chance, and neither could afford to lose it. The competition was no longer about impressing the crowd or the talent scout, it was about proving, once and for all, who was the better musician. As the evening wore on, Luke and Jesse each took the stage. Their performances were powerful, filled with raw emotion, their voices ringing out in the packed church hall. The audience, captivated by both, had no idea of the silent war waging between them, each trying to outdo the other with every note, every chord, every breath. It was as if the stage had become their battleground, and the song, their weapon of choice. But when the final performance ended, and the judges were ready to announce the winner, the outcome was not what either had expected. Neither Luke nor Jesse took home the prize that night. Instead, the victory went to someone entirely unexpected, a young woman named Lily, who had quietly entered the competition and stunned everyone with her voice. Lily's performance had been effortless, her voice warm and sweet, flowing over the audience like a gentle breeze. She hadn't been part of the rivalry between Luke and Jesse, but in a single night, she had stolen the spotlight. The crowd roared with applause, and as Lily accepted the trophy with a smile, Luke and Jesse could only stand in the wings, disbelief and frustration simmering in their chests. After the competition, the mood in the small town hall shifted. The crowd had begun to disperse, but the lingering buzz of excitement from the performances still filled the air. Lily, glowing from her victory, was the center of attention. She moved through the room gracefully, receiving compliments and handshakes, her trophy gleaming in the dim light. Her smile never faltered, 
lighting up her face in a way that seemed effortless, and her energy was infectious. She spotted Luke and Jesse standing by the stage, their expressions still shadowed with the sting of losing, though they were trying to mask it with polite smiles. With a cheerful bounce in her step, she approached them, her green eyes sparkling under the overhead lights. You both did amazing tonight, Lily said, her voice light and airy, carrying the warmth of someone genuinely kind. It was really hard to follow you too. Luke and Jesse exchanged a quick glance, their tension palpable despite the friendly tone of the conversation. They were both trying to keep it together, but each was already sizing the other up. Lily's words felt like salt in the wound. She might have meant well, but in their minds, her compliment was just another reminder that they had failed, that she had succeeded where they had stumbled. I'm surprised you say that, Luke replied, forcing a grin, his voice carrying just a hint of bitterness. You're the one with the trophy, after all. Jesse, not wanting to be outdone, chuckled and added, yeah, you stole the show, Lily. Guess we'll have to step up our game next time. Lily laughed, the sound soft and melodic, completely unaware of the brewing storm between the two men. To her, this was all light-hearted banter. She didn't see the quiet rivalry that simmered beneath their words, nor did she realize how her innocent flirtations were being perceived. She gave Luke a playful nudge on the shoulder, her touch light, and smiled over at Jessie with a wink that was nothing more than a friendly gesture in her mind. But to the two young men, it was something far more complicated. Lily wasn't trying to lead them on. She was naturally warm, open, and comfortable in her own skin. Compliments flowed easily from her lips, and her charm came effortlessly. She wasn't one to shy away from casual flirtation, not because she was playing games, but because it was just how she connected with people. Her bright personality was magnetic, and she enjoyed making people feel good, whether with a laugh, a wink, or a soft touch. But Luke and Jesse didn't see it that way. To Luke, the way Lily brushed against him, the way her eyes lingered on his face for just a second longer than he expected, made him think she was interested in more than just small talk. He felt a sense of pride welling up in his chest, thinking maybe she had seen something in him tonight, something beyond his voice, beyond the stage. But that pride quickly turned sour when he noticed the same lingering glance she gave to Jesse. Jesse, for his part, wasn't immune to Lily's charm either. He noticed how she smiled a little wider when she spoke to him, how her laugh seemed just a touch more genuine when he made a joke. He felt the familiar rush of excitement that came with thinking someone might be interested in him. But that rush was soon undercut when he saw how effortlessly she flirted with Luke, too, her light touch on his shoulder, the sparkle in her eyes when she spoke to him. Each man believed he had the upper hand. Each thought they were the one Lily truly favored. And while neither of them had known Lily before tonight, the rivalry between them grew into something more than just a musical contest. Now, it was about her, about winning her attention, her affection, her heart. The desire to outshine the other shifted from the stage to the realm of romance, and what had started as a competitive push to prove themselves musically now bled into something far more personal. As the night wore on, the tension grew, even if neither of them would admit it. Conversations between the three of them became more layered, with Luke and Jesse subtly trying to one-up each other in front of her, each small remark carrying the weight of their growing jealousy. If Jesse made Lily laugh, Luke would swoop in with a witty comment of his own, trying to steer her attention back his way. If Luke mentioned a gig he had coming up, Jesse would casually drop the fact that he'd been asked to play at a local bar next weekend. Lily, caught in the middle, didn't notice the escalating rivalry. To her, it was just friendly banter between two talented guys she admired. She enjoyed their company, the easy flow of conversation, the way they seemed to push each other in a way that felt healthy and competitive, or so she thought. But behind their smiles, Luke and Jesse's envy and frustration only deepened. Every smile she gave, every laugh she shared with the other man, felt like a small victory for their rival, and they couldn't stand it. What had started as a battle for the trophy had now transformed into a silent war for Lily's attention. They didn't just want to win her over, they wanted to beat each other. It wasn't about love, or even attraction, not really. It was about proving that they were better. Better at singing, better at performing, and now, 
better at charming the woman who had come between them. The stakes had shifted. The rivalry had turned personal, and neither Luke nor Jesse was willing to back down. Unbeknownst to Lily, she had become the prize in a competition neither man had asked for, but both were determined to win. And in their race to claim victory, they failed to see the toll it was taking on them, and on her. As the days passed, the tension between Luke and Jesse became impossible to ignore. What had once been subtle glances and barely veiled rivalry had now escalated into outright animosity. Every encounter between them was charged with resentment, their exchanges growing sharper and more hostile with each passing day. It was as if the air between them crackled with unspoken accusations, and the weight of their jealousy pressed down on them both, warping their interactions. Luke, with his quick temper and stubborn pride, convinced himself that Jesse was deliberately trying to sabotage him. Every time he saw Jesse with Lily, talking or laughing, it felt like a knife twisting in his chest. He began to interpret every action Jesse took as an attempt to undermine him, to sway Lily's favor. If Jesse complimented her, Luke saw it as manipulation. If Jesse mentioned his upcoming gigs, Luke took it as bragging meant to make him look inferior. Even when Jesse didn't say a word, Luke felt the sting of competition in every glance, in every breath. He's doing this on purpose, Luke muttered to himself one evening, pacing his small, dimly lit kitchen. His calloused hands clenched into fists as he replayed the events of the past few days in his mind. Jesse's smug smile after their conversations with Lily, the way he always seemed to be around whenever Luke was, it all felt too calculated. He knows what he's doing. He's trying to make me look like a fool. In his mind, Jesse wasn't just competing for Lily, he was actively sabotaging any chance Luke had at winning her over. It was all a game to Jesse, Luke thought, and the stakes were higher than ever. He couldn't stand the idea of losing to him again, not after the music competition where they'd both been upstaged. Now, with Lily in the mix, it was personal. On the other side of town, Jesse wasn't faring any better. He sat on the edge of his bed, strumming his guitar absent-mindedly, but the music didn't bring him the peace it usually did. His thoughts were clouded with frustration, the once easygoing nature he prided himself on now consumed by thoughts of Luke. Jesse couldn't help but believe that Luke was playing dirty, trying to undercut him at every turn. He's acting like he's got it all figured out, Jesse muttered, his fingers pausing on the strings. Like he's the only one who deserves her attention. He shook his head, his jaw tightening. Luke's confidence felt like arrogance to Jesse, a smugness that grated on his nerves. He had seen the way Luke hovered around Lily, the way he made sure to mention his latest songs or drop hints about his future plans. To Jesse, it felt like Luke was trying to box him out, to make him seem insignificant by comparison. Every interaction with Luke felt like a battle, and Jesse was tired of pretending it was just friendly competition. He wasn't blind to the fact that Lily was caught in the middle of their feud, but he couldn't shake the feeling that if he didn't fight for her attention, Luke would take it all. And it wasn't just about her, it was about proving he was better than Luke, that he could outshine him in something other than music. It was about pride, and Jesse's pride was bruised. Their encounters, once tinged with the remnants of their musical rivalry, now became outright confrontations. If they saw each other in town, at the local diner, or even just passing on the road, their words were no longer casual or civil. One morning, as they crossed paths outside the town's general store, the tension finally bubbled over. Luke, his patience worn thin from days of simmering frustration, couldn't hold back anymore. Didn't think I'd see you here this early, Luke said, his tone laced with accusation as he eyed Jesse loading his truck with groceries. Jesse glanced up, already sensing the hostility in Luke's voice. What's that supposed to mean? He shot back, his voice steady but with an edge. Luke folded his arms across his chest, his posture stiff with barely concealed anger. You've been everywhere lately, haven't you? Always hanging around Lily. You think I don't notice what you're doing? Jesse set down the grocery bag he was holding, his temper flaring. What I'm doing? He took a step closer to Luke, his voice lowering dangerously. You're the one who's been acting like you've already won her over. Walking around like you own the place. Maybe you're the one who's trying too hard. 
The two men stood toe to toe, the tension between them thick in the cool morning air. Neither was willing to back down, their rivalry now fully out in the open. What had once been a silent competition had turned into an all-out feud, fueled by jealousy, pride, and the desire to outdo the other. Face it, Jesse, Luke sneered, his voice dripping with bitterness. You've been trying to undercut me from the start. You can't stand that I might actually be the one she's interested in. Jesse's eyes narrowed. Funny, I was thinking the same thing about you. The exchange might have escalated further if not for the sound of a familiar voice from behind them. Lily, completely unaware of the growing animosity between the two, had appeared out of the store, her arms filled with flowers she had just purchased for her garden. Her cheerful presence, which usually lightened the mood, did nothing to ease the tension this time. Hey, you too. Lily said, her smile bright as ever, though she quickly sensed the heavy atmosphere between the men. She glanced between them, frowning slightly. Everything all right? Luke and Jesse quickly stepped back, trying to mask their anger, but the resentment still hung thick in the air. Neither wanted to admit that they had been fighting over her, neither wanted to show that their jealousy had consumed them to the point of public confrontation. Yeah, everything's fine, Luke said, forcing a smile. Just talking, Jesse added, though his tone was tight. Lily didn't push further, but she could tell something was off. She gave them both a curious glance but eventually let it drop, her mind more focused on the upcoming competition later that week. As Lily walked away, both men stared after her, their unresolved anger simmering beneath the surface. Neither would admit it, not to themselves or to each other, but the truth was painfully clear. They weren't really fighting for Lily's heart, they were fighting to prove they were better than the other. Their pursuit of her had become less about her and more about their bruised egos, their need to win at something after their shared loss at the music competition. And neither of them saw the damage they were doing, not to each other, not to their music, and certainly not to Lily, who was blissfully unaware of how deeply they had spiraled into jealousy and pride. Then came the next music competition, just a week later, and the entire town was abuzz with anticipation. The old barn where these events were held had never seen such a crowd. Strings of lights hung from the rafters, casting a warm glow over the makeshift stage, and the usual murmurs of excitement floated through the room. There was something electrifying about the night, the promise of new performances and perhaps the hope of redemption for those who had fallen short in the previous competition. For Luke and Jesse, this was another chance to prove themselves, to settle the score between them once and for all. However, amid the festive atmosphere, something was different. Lily, the woman who had taken home the trophy the previous week, seemed quieter, almost subdued. Gone was the infectious energy that had captivated everyone just days before, the lively spark that had made her stand out from the rest. She still smiled at those who greeted her, her face a picture of grace and politeness, but the light in her eyes had dimmed. Her steps, once confident and full of life, seemed more measured, almost careful, as if each movement took a little more effort than it should. As she took the stage for her performance, her voice still flowed effortlessly, as sweet and pure as ever. The notes she hit were flawless, her tone rich and full of emotion, but to those who were paying attention, there was a subtle difference in the way she sang. It was as if she was pouring every last bit of herself into the music, her voice carrying a weight that hadn't been there before. The usual lilt of joy and freedom in her voice had been replaced by something deeper, something almost bittersweet. Luke noticed first. He stood near the back of the room, arms crossed, his eyes fixed on her as she performed. There was something off, something he couldn't quite place. He had always been struck by her energy, the way she seemed to light up any room she walked into, but tonight, that glow was missing. She looked pale under the stage lights, her smile a little too practiced, her laughter just a little too strained. She seems, different, Luke muttered to himself, narrowing his eyes as he tried to figure out what was wrong. For a moment, his rivalry with Jesse was forgotten, overshadowed by the nagging feeling that something wasn't quite right with Lily. But before he could dwell on it, his thoughts were pulled back to the competition at hand. This was his night to shine, his chance to outdo Jesse and reclaim his pride. Jesse, standing on the opposite side of the room, 
also noticed the change in Lily. He had spent the entire week replaying their interactions in his head, trying to gauge where he stood with her. He was determined to win not just the competition, but her favor as well. But now, as he watched her on stage, something tugged at the back of his mind. She wasn't herself. The way she smiled at the crowd seemed forced, her movements less fluid than before. Her usually vibrant personality had a shadow over it, and even though she still performed with her usual grace, there was a sadness beneath the surface that Jesse couldn't ignore. But like Luke, Jesse pushed the thought aside. He was too consumed with his desire to win, to prove that he was better than Luke, to really focus on what was happening in front of him. He told himself that she was probably just tired, that the long week of performing and the constant attention had worn her out. After all, Lily was the star of these competitions now, the one everyone was watching. It made sense that she would feel a little overwhelmed. As the night went on, Luke and Jesse's rivalry intensified. Every glance they exchanged across the room was loaded with tension, their rivalry no longer just about music but about something far more personal. They avoided each other for most of the night, both too proud to admit that they had noticed the same thing about Lily. Neither wanted to show weakness or concern, especially not to the other. The competition had shifted from the stage to a much more private battlefield, and they were too blinded by their own egos to see anything else clearly. When Lily finished her performance, she stepped off the stage with a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. She accepted the polite applause from the audience, nodding graciously as people congratulated her. But once she was out of the spotlight, her shoulders slumped just a fraction, her face betraying a flicker of exhaustion that hadn't been there before. She made her way to the corner of the room, trying to blend into the crowd, but her once magnetic presence seemed to fade into the background. Luke noticed her standing alone near the back of the barn, her eyes scanning the room but not really seeing anyone. He thought about approaching her, asking if she was alright, but something held him back. Maybe it was pride, maybe it was the fear that Jesse might see it as a weakness. Instead, he stayed where he was, watching her from a distance, the uneasy feeling gnawing at him. He shook his head, telling himself that it wasn't his place to worry about her. She had won the last competition, after all. She was the one everyone was talking about. She didn't need his concern. Jesse, on the other side of the room, had the same internal debate. He saw her standing by herself, her usual vibrant energy noticeably absent, and for a moment, he thought about going over to check on her. But like Luke, his pride got in the way. He didn't want to appear too interested, didn't want to give Luke any reason to think he was making a move. So he stayed where he was, watching her from afar, his gut telling him that something was wrong but his ego refusing to act on it. As the night wore on, the competition drew to a close, and the crowd began to thin out. Luke and Jesse, both still riding the high of their performances, were too caught up in their own worlds to notice the way Lily slipped out quietly, her departure almost unnoticed by the other contestants. Neither of them realized that this would be the last time they saw her alive. That night, after the competition, Lily was found dead. The discovery sent shockwaves through the small town, the news spreading like wildfire before dawn even broke. It was the kind of town where nothing ever really happened, at least, nothing like this. Everyone knew everyone else's business, and Lily's death became the only topic of conversation. The usually peaceful morning, with its soft hum of farm life, was replaced by hushed whispers and frantic rumors. The town's sheriff, a middle-aged man who had spent his career dealing with petty thefts and small disputes, suddenly found himself facing a tragedy unlike anything he'd ever encountered. He immediately launched an investigation, but before he could even get to the scene, the town had already begun to form its own conclusions. Lily had been found behind the old barn where the competition had taken place, lying in the cool grass beneath a large oak tree. Her once radiant face was pale, her body unnaturally still. To those who first stumbled upon her, it seemed as if she had simply fallen asleep, her features peaceful, almost serene. But there was no mistaking the lifelessness in her eyes. The sheriff arrived at the scene, a heavy air of unease settling over the gathering crowd. The questions were already flying. What had happened? 
How could something so terrible have occurred in their quiet little town? The investigation began, but the people of the town were quick to leap to their own conclusions. Whispers spread, growing louder with each passing hour, as fingers started pointing. Suspicion fell squarely on two people, Luke and Jesse, the two men who had been most entangled in Lily's recent life. Their rivalry was no secret, and in the wake of her death, it became the focal point of every rumor. At first, the townspeople spoke in hushed tones, exchanging glances over their morning coffee or while walking through the town square. But as the day went on, the whispers grew louder, more accusatory. People began to wonder if the rivalry between Luke and Jesse had spiraled out of control. Had one of them, fueled by jealousy and bitterness, done something unspeakable? The sheriff, trying to maintain order, questioned everyone who had been at the competition, but all anyone could talk about was Luke and Jesse. They had been at the center of it all, their rivalry well known. Some even claimed to have seen the two men glaring at each other throughout the night, their jealousy palpable. The gossip grew darker with each telling. The rivalry that had once seemed like a harmless competition now took on a sinister edge in the wake of Lily's death. Had their desire to outdo each other gone too far? Luke, upon hearing the news, felt a cold dread settle over him. He hadn't spoken to Lily that night after the competition, but the memory of her quiet, subdued demeanor gnawed at him. He could still see her standing at the edge of the barn, her once bright eyes dulled by something unspoken. His mind raced as he replayed the evening, trying to remember if there had been any sign, any clue that she was in danger. But the more he thought about it, the more his thoughts twisted. And then came the creeping doubt, had Jesse done something? The suspicion began to fester in his mind, taking root like a poison. Luke had always believed Jesse was capable of underhanded tactics. They had exchanged sharp words in the past, their rivalry turning personal. Luke had seen the way Jesse looked at Lily, the way he had seemed so determined to win her favor. What if Jesse had seen her rejection, or worse, Luke's chance with her, as too much to bear? What if, in a fit of desperation, Jesse had done something he couldn't take back? Across town, Jesse was struggling with his own thoughts. When he heard about Lily's death, his first reaction was shock, but that quickly morphed into suspicion, suspicion directed squarely at Luke. Jesse had always felt that Luke had an edge when it came to charm, the kind of charm that women like Lily found irresistible. Maybe Luke had gotten too close, maybe he had tried to push things too far, and when things didn't go the way he wanted. Jesse shuddered at the thought. The two men had always seen each other as rivals, but now, in the wake of Lily's death, their rivalry took on a new and dangerous meaning. Each man began to believe that the other was not just a competitor, but a threat. Their jealousy, already simmering, boiled over, twisting their thoughts until they were convinced that one of them was responsible for what had happened. Jesse found himself replaying the events of the previous week in his mind, focusing on every interaction he'd had with Luke. Every glance, every word, now seemed laced with hidden meaning. He could picture Luke standing backstage, the tension between them thick enough to cut. He remembered the way Luke had looked at Lily, the way he had seemed just a little too confident. What if Luke had snapped? What if, in his jealousy, Luke had done something unforgivable? The townspeople, eager for answers, only fueled the fire. People began to choose sides, some swearing that Jesse had always been the more hot-headed of the two, while others were quick to point out Luke's competitive nature. Everyone seemed to have a theory, and soon enough, the entire town was consumed by the question, who had killed Lily? But as the investigation continued, it became clear that the situation was far more complex than anyone had realized. The sheriff, sifting through the evidence, began to uncover pieces of Lily's life that no one had known about. Days passed, and with each sunrise, the weight of uncertainty hung over the town. The investigation into Lily's death had stalled, leaving the air thick with tension. Luke and Jesse were no longer the confident young men who had strutted across the stage, basking in the spotlight of their rivalry. Now they were consumed by guilt and suspicion, haunted by the part they might have played in the tragic events. The town, once buzzing with whispers about who might have been responsible, had grown quiet, its people waiting for answers. Then, the truth finally came to light. 
It wasn't a sudden revelation, but rather a slow unraveling of secrets that began with a conversation between the sheriff and Lily's family. In the quiet confines of their modest home, her parents revealed something that no one, not even Luke or Jesse, had known. Lily hadn't been murdered. She had been living with a terminal illness. The news hit the sheriff hard, but not as hard as it would hit the town. Lily had been carrying the burden of her illness in silence, a private battle that she had chosen not to share with anyone. Her diagnosis had come months earlier, a prognosis that left her with little time. She knew the end was approaching, but instead of allowing her illness to define her final days, she had chosen a different path. She kept it hidden, not out of shame, but out of a desire to live fully and freely in the time she had left. For Lily, music had always been a source of joy and escape, and these small-town competitions had become her way of leaving a mark before she faded away. As the sheriff pieced together the story, the town began to understand what had really happened. Lily's illness was terminal, her body had simply given out after months of pushing herself. She had collapsed after the competition, her heart finally too weak to continue. It had been no act of violence, no scheme or sabotage by one of the men vying for her attention. Her death was a quiet, tragic ending to a life that had burned brightly, even in its final moments. When Luke and Jesse learned the truth, they were devastated. All the jealousy, all the bitterness, seemed so meaningless now. They had spent weeks competing for something that was never theirs to win, Lily's favor, when all she had been doing was trying to live out her final days in the only way she knew how. She had been sick, and they had been too blinded by their rivalry to notice the signs. The spark in her eyes that had dimmed, her sudden quietness at the last competition, those were the signs of a woman fighting her own body, not someone caught between two suitors. It was a sobering realization. Lily hadn't needed their attention, their competition, or their rivalry. What she had needed was understanding, and maybe a little bit of peace in her final days. Instead, Luke and Jesse had turned her final weeks into a battleground, all because they couldn't see past their own egos. The sheriff made the announcement to the town, explaining that there had been no foul play. Lily's death had been natural, a result of the illness she had fought so hard to keep hidden. The town reacted with sadness, but also with respect for Lily's choice. She had faced her fate with quiet dignity, and in her final days, she had done what she loved, singing her heart out for anyone who would listen. The competitions had been her way of saying goodbye, her last performances on a stage that, for her, had been the world. For Luke and Jesse, the news hit harder than it did for anyone else. They realized how foolish they had been, caught up in their own petty rivalry while Lily was living her last moments. They had both admired her, but neither of them had truly understood what she was going through. The guilt weighed heavily on them, but there was also a sense of deep sorrow for the missed opportunity to be there for her, to offer her comfort instead of conflict. In the days that followed, Luke and Jesse found themselves drawn together in their shared grief. The rivalry that had once defined their relationship seemed so insignificant now, a remnant of a time when they had let pride and jealousy cloud their judgment. They began to talk, to share their feelings of guilt and regret. Slowly, their bitterness gave way to a deeper understanding. They weren't enemies, they were two young men who had made a mistake. A mistake that, while painful, had taught them the value of humility, friendship, and compassion. They decided to honor Lily's memory in the only way they knew how, through music. Together, they began to perform at local competitions and gatherings, not as rivals but as partners. Their sets often included the song they had both chosen that fateful night, the old country ballad that had once sparked their competition. But now, when they sang it, it was a tribute to Lily, a way of keeping her memory alive. Their performances carried a weight they hadn't had before, a sense of purpose that went beyond simply proving who was better. Luke and Jesse were no longer singing for themselves, they were singing for Lily. They carried her story with them, sharing it with anyone who would listen, hoping that others might learn from their mistakes. Lily had lived her final days with grace, choosing to focus on the things she loved rather than the fate she couldn't escape. Luke and Jesse wanted to share that message with the world. In time, they became known not just for their talent, but for the emotional depth of their performances. 
They toured the region together, playing small towns and cities, always making sure to dedicate a song to the woman who had brought them together. Their music, once fueled by competition and ego, was now filled with the warmth of friendship and the desire to honor a life lived with quiet courage. Luke and Jesse might not have won that competition, but they had gained something far more important, a deeper understanding of themselves, of life, and of the power of music to heal. Lily's death had broken them apart, but her memory had brought them back together, stronger than before. They would never forget the lessons they had learned, or the woman who had taught them the true meaning of grace. The revelation shattered both Luke and Jesse, leaving them reeling in its wake. In that moment, everything they had been consumed by, their petty jealousy, the rivalry that had clouded their hearts, suddenly felt so small, so insignificant. They had been so caught up in their own ambitions that they had failed to see the struggles of the woman who had captivated them both. Lily had been fighting her own silent battle against a terminal illness, while they were too blinded by pride and competition to notice the signs. The weight of their behavior hit them hard, like a heavy blanket of guilt pressing down on their chests. For the first time in weeks, they found themselves sitting together in silence, no longer rivals, but two young men mourning the same profound loss. In the weeks that followed, Luke and Jesse began to navigate their grief in a new way. They found themselves drawn to each other, not out of competition, but out of a shared sense of guilt and regret for the way they had treated each other and for the way they had taken Lily's presence for granted. They started to meet regularly, at first in quiet corners of their favorite local cafe, where the sound of clinking cups and murmured conversations created a comforting backdrop. As they sipped their coffee, they began to share their thoughts, their feelings, and their memories of Lily, how her laughter lit up a room, how her voice could soften even the hardest of hearts, and how she had inspired them both, albeit indirectly. Their conversations soon turned to music. As they spoke about the songs they had sung at the competition, they realized they had both been inspired by the same melodies and lyrics that Lily had loved. It felt natural to blend their voices together, to harmonize the way they had always dreamed of doing but never had the chance. They decided to take their grief and turn it into something beautiful. They began to sing together, not as enemies but as partners, traveling to small towns and performing at local venues where they had once competed against each other. Their voices, once distinct and individual, blended in harmony, carrying the memory of Lily with them wherever they went. Each performance became a tribute to her spirit, a way to keep her memory alive. They chose to sing songs that echoed the themes of love, loss, and resilience, songs that spoke to the human experience and connected with their audience on a deeper level. And every night, they dedicated a song to her, a ballad they had written in her honor. It was a simple melody, yet it carried the weight of their journey, of jealousy, regret, and ultimately, forgiveness. The lyrics told the story of their rivalry transformed into friendship, of their recognition of the fleeting nature of life, and of their commitment to honor the woman who had brought them together. With every note they sang, they found healing. They sang not just to remember Lily, but to remind themselves of the lessons she had taught them without even knowing. Life was too short for pride and rivalry, love, whether for music or for a person, was meant to be shared, not fought over. As they sang, they felt the burden of their past lift, replaced by a sense of purpose and unity. They learned to lean on each other, to support one another as they navigated their shared grief. Their performances began to attract attention, and they found themselves welcomed into the hearts of the communities they visited. Luke and Jesse were no longer just two young men from the same small town, they were artists, storytellers, and ambassadors of the lessons learned from a tragic loss. The song they sang in Lily's memory became their signature piece, a haunting melody that echoed the love they had for her and the camaraderie they had developed. Each time they performed it, the audience would sit in rapt attention, moved by the emotion behind the lyrics and the harmony of their voices. As they traveled on, Luke and Jesse forged a deep friendship bound by music and shared experiences. They spent long hours in the car, talking about everything from their dreams to their fears, and they learned to support one another in ways they never had before. They became each other's biggest fans, celebrating each other's successes and providing comfort during difficult moments. Their friendship flourished, fueled by a new sense of understanding and empathy that had blossomed from their shared grief. 
Ultimately, they learned that the real victory wasn't in beating each other but in lifting each other up. They understood that music had the power to connect people, to heal wounds, and to honor the memories of those they had lost. Their journey took on a new meaning, and they became not just performers but advocates for the message that life is precious and fleeting. The song they sang in Lily's memory would always be their greatest performance, a reminder that some stories end not in triumph or defeat, but in the quiet beauty of understanding. In every note, they found strength, in every performance, they found healing. And as they continued to travel the road ahead, they did so with hearts open to new possibilities and friendships, forever changed by the woman who had shown them the true power of love and music. <laughs>